to do this thing on the second day. They make you walk on a cable, which is 36 inches in diameter, but with only a 12 inch strip down the middle that you have to stay on because the rest of it's slipping about the end of the And so that's a task to get the pretty much. Yeah. So I've made it to another cabin. Um, it's a bit of a weird one. I don't think this one is meant to be slept in. I'm also trying to be very quick with setting up my sleeping stuff and um, turning the lights off. This little cabin has a light, which is amazing. So far so good, by the way. I am about three or four days away from my halfway point. Uh, then I'm gonna stay another two nights in an Airbnb to kind of rest, uh, reassess, as I always do with my route. Also, I've been having a bit of an achy leg. I think it's just too much repetitive uh, movement. Uh, and also I've been pushing it a little bit with long days the previous week. So I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm just gonna be careful. Um, no, actually that's a lie. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep doing big days. <laughs> I just wanna go up north. I want to see the season change properly because right now it's everything's just wet. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep doing um, the unpacking stuff before it's completely dark and it's too obvious that there's a light shining in the house. And I'll see you later.
good morning. Um, it's November 2nd today at 5.45 in the morning. Somebody <laughs> just walked in with a flashlight and uh, yeah, that scared me. Not much could have happened. It's just that uh, it kind of affirmed what I already thought. I'm gonna stay here for a little bit longer and I'll keep you updated as always. The trails are so incredibly narrow, uh, so my feet, like my shoes are already soaked. So I'm just gonna pitch the tent, put on something warm, make a fire. I'm right next to a lake. It's a huge lake and it's so quiet. You can just hear the water just a little bit. It's incredible. I'm saying this but I'm so happy to hear the highway <laughs> after 30 kilometers of just mud and boulders and rocks Woo. I'm happy to have some smooth paved road
the second day they make it walk on a cable which is 36 inches in diameter with only a 12 inch strip down the middle and you have to stay on because the rest of it's really slipping in that bit isn't it? Uh, so that's a test to get the it's pretty job. much yeah right. there's a guy called Greg Monterano and he said you can't walk the cable because you don't make it Parking sucked. After a long week, I arrived in a, in a warm home again for a few days to recharge because the last few days were genuinely horrid. Miserableness and mistakes and um, the feeling of rushing because, you know, in the end I am trying to beat the daylight every day. I have to be extremely careful not to make uh, too many mistakes. I have to be extremely careful that I don't plan too big of a day because I need at least several hours um, to calculate in potential mistakes but also to calculate simply extra time because if the mapping says it's going to take me about three hours it's going to be more closer to five hours. This is uh, honestly pushing my limits a little bit in an interesting way but pushing limits nonetheless. Uh, when I just arrived and tried to open the door, there was a lady with her daughter who stopped in the car right in front of the apartment here. And she asked me uh, how I was doing because she passed me by um, in the car already a while ago when I was much further down south. So it was a super funny coincidence. And she also happens to live temporarily across uh, from the apartment I'm in right now. So she said, if you looking for someone, just some company, or just, you know, chill out, anything, you just knock on the door and, uh, and we'll be happy to have you. Um, so that's always 
always a very nice welcome and uh, I appreciate that very much. I need to, I really need to shower. I stink. I'm dirty and I'm like, my eyes are crusty from all the, all the crying. <laughs> because you know icy winds that just like oh, cut into your eyes and just big trucks big lorries just passing me by some of them really nicely and very gently others not so much and they just like they like whiff up they just like <laughs> spray me with dirt and it sticks to my face for days when you've got sweat on your body or your clothes are wet and you freeze all night long, not because you had insulation that didn't do its job, but because you made the mistake of getting your body full of sweat before you jumped into a cold, cold situation. Two pillows in the summertime or those fall months, please stop seeing you all night. All right, so my rest days are pretty much over. Um, I'm packing everything right now. I've adjusted my bike a little bit because uh, until now I've been carrying a backpack, which was horrible. Not alone, not just because of the weight, and you know, you get a little bit of a backache, but also uh, because of the sweating, whether you do a whole lot of exercise or not, those straps are so thick that um, it's almost inevitable that you're gonna get like wet uh, stripes and like sweaty patches underneath your backpack. And I can't have that <laughs> when I'm going into the cold, or at least it's gonna get colder. I've already had this, I had to deal with this in the cold. And that's why I know that I don't want to do it when it gets even colder. What I've done is I've strapped uh, my backpack now on the front of my bike. I've added some gloves, basically. It's a little uh, insulation layer. And underneath my front pack, uh, right here, you can see that I've strapped the backpack on my pizza rack. And I have put my uh, fork rack back on so I can make optimal use of, uh, of the space. So I'm quite excited um, and curious about whether or not it's going to work. Um, I think it will work, but everything I do at this point is trial and error. Uh, let's see if it um, doesn't wiggle around too much like it did before. Other than that, my first night outside <laughs> again <laughs> is going to be the worst one uh, this week because it will go down to about minus eight, if not lower. So the rest of the week, um, it's kind of like balancing around minus two, minus three. Uh, but the first day, the one day that uh, I'm going to set out again, uh, it's going to be really cold. But it's going to be a challenge as well because I can finally properly test out if, you know, my gear is ready to deal with all this. And if it is, then I know I can uh, handle more than just sleeping in shelters. So tomorrow I'll be setting off around 10, I'm going to try. I still need to purchase a couple of things and then I'll be off again. <laughs> I'm going to do short days from now on. I know I said that before, <laughs> but I mean it this time because, yeah, once it gets dark now in the icy, icy, icy cold, uh, it's not much fun. You need to be like properly prepared and know what you're doing. That's what I've learned now. <laughs> I made a mistake like that before. So I'm going to... Um, get back to you in the morning and do a little recap maybe and uh, I'll see you in the morning. Ready.
I'm almost at the campsite and like 15 minutes away. I think, yeah, it's four and a half K. Fine. It's still kind of light out, but it's getting dark already a little bit. So uh, last hour of light and uh, I want to set up camp before then. Plus make some food, put warm clothes on. And that's it. All my water is frozen by the way. Obviously, <laughs> but it's kind of funny to notice uh, when you want to take a sip out of your bottle, and all of a sudden, the water comes out. And you realize, oh, yeah, it's minus six outside. Anyway, actually, I don't even know if you can hear me because of the wind. Um, I'll see you at the campsite. Last leg. Bye. Here. Look at that view. I don't quite know how much you can see on uh, an action cam, but wow, mountains and a lake. <laughs> Definitely my tent's not gonna fit in there, but I'm gonna try. I don't know if you can see this properly, but this is my sleeping bag. Inside I've got a um, sleeping mat, and then I've got my winter jacket right here, underneath, and underneath that I have blow-up mattress, insulation layer, I've got another ground sheet underneath that. And then underneath that, <laughs> I've got an emergency blanket. If that isn't enough, then I don't know what is. Wish me luck. Hey, hey. It's um, almost 5 p.m. And I'm going to hunker down in my bed right now. I had some warm drinks and some warm food. And uh, inevitably, I'll probably have to go to the toilet again at some point. But, you know, that's just the way it is. All right. So um, I'll keep you posted. Um, I'll film a little bit later on as well. Okay. I just saw that the worst uh, dip isn't minus nine anymore. It's a minus seven. So that's a plus, I guess. Um, so I'm just chilling. Uh, waiting for the the worst moment, which is about 9 p.m. and I should be fine. Yeah, just gonna snack a little bit and uh, so I don't get hungry in the night because it's so early. And uh, then I'm gonna sleep, listen to some podcasts. Tomorrow is gonna snow though, so I'm not quite sure um, what the plan is yet. I wanted to. <clears throat> cycle about like 65k maybe but um it's gonna snow from about 7 a.m to 12 p.m so we'll have to see what's possible and see how severe it will be because it's like heavy snow then there's a small chance of me doing that um if it's light snowfall i'll make sure to maybe be gone by 9-ish, 10-ish. So, let's see what happens. Good night. <laughs>
Boss of the supermarket just gave me a whole bag of fruit. Just went in to get some water and she just handed me a whole bag of fruit. So sweet. Before I forget, her name was Katarina.